Hello hunters, Whiskey Hunter here. Welcome to the Linen Closet. Thanks for joining me today. If you like this video when we're done, please click the like button. Uh, if you want to see more upcoming ones, subscribe and please share with your friends. Before I talk about a hunt and a little something else, I want to talk about how much water should you put in your whiskey when you uh, want to see how it changes. I'm not including putting ice in it, which some people do, right or wrong. Uh, I typically don't, unless it's a bourbon. But when you put some water in your whiskey, I always taste it neat first. When I want to see what kind of profile change I'm going to get, I usually only add one drop of water at a time because that's going to change the molecular structure of that whiskey of how it came out of the cask. And you can always add two, but you can't take away. And actually, you can, a dram can go on for an hour, an hour and a half, just nosing, tasting, with adding a little bit of water here and there. And uh, can really change the flavor quite a bit. And that just leads me to one more thing, and that's cask strength. Sometimes you'll see whiskeys with a cask strength of even 41% that have been in the cask for 30 years or 35 years. Because the angel shares that, that's lost over the years and it shows that it's only 41%, it doesn't mean it's the same as a watered down 41%. A cask strength 41% whiskey can feel like you're tasting a 50% whiskey because it's natural. It's uh, just through the years of the angel share being taken from it, from nature, it's going to lose that ABV, but by no means does it mean it's a weak whiskey. So when you see that, keep that in mind on those older whiskeys. I did an unboxing today. I had a box come, and uh, it's quite a surprise of what I got, and I wanted to show you what it is. So we're going to go to that now and take a look at what was in this box. I've been waiting for this box to arrive for the last week or so. Let's find out what is in this box. I'll say that um, glass, fragile, though I never put that on my boxes. It's a sure way to get it damaged. So I had a Pappy Van Winkle 20 year and a George T. Stagg from 2016 that I traded for what is in this box. Um, it's a scotch. I traded bourbon. And uh, this, is, this is amazing. Let's hope this is in one piece. This is uh, about the best bottle I've ever traded for shipped so I'm very leery we have inside as we look at how it was packaged some, that's a neat haven't seen this before so this is a insulated sheet I guess he got it from uh, the uh, Oh, I guess you got it from the packing company. So I guess you can package stuff in that sheet, but he used it as a insul uh, well cushion. We got some bubble wrap on top. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! I see a wrapper of some parafilm. I wonder if he did parafilm that. So far. If you've ever gotten a bottle broken and uh, the juice is leaked out, these things dissolve from the alcohol. It's like glue, just gummy glue. Okay, so let's see what we have in here. Oh, it's right. well, I certainly hope there's a box with this too. Oh, I feel the box. We'll pull out the box afterwards. Let's uh, 
feels dry. That's a very good sign. So I traded a Pappy Van Winkle 20 year and a George T. Stagg from somebody that had this available on a private group uh, that, that I know and he knows me from my whiskey group on Facebook. So I felt he was a credible source and that uh, some people vouched for this bottle. Oh my, it's wrapped well, that's good. That's a good sign. Right. This came from the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast. I appreciate a well-wrapped package. A lot of bubble wrap on this. Holy moly. And a lot of packing tape. Right. What could this be? And more wrapping. Holy moly. Well, for what he got, I wrapped mine pretty damn well. He better wrap this well. So, we're almost there. Looks like could be a bottle. Feels dry. Let's see about taking this off. And I'll tell you that the box that it comes in is a pretty impressive as well. This is not something you're going to come across every day. It was distilled in, two, in 1975. It's a 25 year old. It better be a 25 year old. So uh, be careful cutting this away. Oh, there's the bottle. Before I show you this, just this is no color added and no no uh, chill filtration. Look at the color of that juice. That's some dark juice. All right, let's check the box and I'll show you these together. Holy crap! All right. Wow. This is packaged well. Let's pull these dividers out. This is home packaged. This is from a private individual. Oh, there we go. This is a solid wood box. Let's uh, cut this away. This is my favorite distiller. This is awesome. It's a little bowed on the front, but it is from the 70s. This is a solid wood box. You can see the straps on it. Some of you may be able to identify it already. Yes, anniversary. McAllen 25 year anniversary. Straps look in great shape. I believe there's some straw on the inside of this box. Ah, there is the straw on the inside of the box. Now let's check the bottle. Ah, the straps hold ah, nailed to the cover. Okay. Now the bottle. This is a 1975 McAllen 25 year old bottled in 2000. This is the last year that the distiller put the date, vintage date on the bottle, which you can see right there, 2000. 750 mil, not the 700 mil. What a bottle. This is, uh, well, 
this 1975 is a certain anniversary for me. I won't go into which anniversary it is, but how exciting is this, huh? That's beautiful. Traded a couple bourbons for it. That, let me say, I got those bourbons at retail, regular retail cost, not retail plus secondary, but the G, George T. Stag and the Pappy 20 was at retail. That's it for this unboxing. Back to the review. Thanks. And we're back. Pretty exciting stuff, huh? Trading bourbons. Well, the hunt today is what we're going to taste today. And that was when I went into one of my favorite stores out here in uh, Berkeley, California. The oldest family-owned store in the country well in the in california i should say this guy's father owned this going back when and he's probably my age and yes it's only been open 30 years but i kid uh, he's got incredible bottles bottles behind bottles on top of bottles on top of the cooler in the back just unbelievable stuff that uh he keeps finding more stuff in the back room and you, you, you really got to ask him to move a lot of bottles. You can't get up behind the shelves, behind the counter. He wouldn't let you go up on a ladder, and it's to the ceiling. Well, I went in there one day and said anything new in, and he had some spring banks, and I grabbed those spring banks. He said, but wait a second, I found something in the back for you. And he went back in the uh, storage room and came out with a uh, box. And I've been looking for this distiller for a while, and it's a lost distillery closed and uh, I was pretty surprised when he brought it out to me and charged me what the retail was on it back when it was first released in 2005. So without further ado, this is the box. It's a Banff. You may not be familiar with this distiller but it is a mothball distillery that shut down now um, it's a Speyside. I'm sure it says it on here somewhere. This is 28 years old. Let's look at the box. I mean at the uh, bottle. It's uh, put out by Gordon and McPhail, which almost everything they do as an independent bottler tends to be good juice. This is a 28 year old Bottled in 2005, distilled in 1976. It's only 40% ABV. This is not a cask strength. 28 year. It's somewhat of a light color. I don't believe it's uh, chill filtered or colors. I'm sure there's no color added. It's just, it's too light. Um, and as you can see, bottled in 2005. I was fortunate, I can't remember who sent me these, but I have a number of sample bottles of this exact bottle. So I'm able to still drink from these samples. I had about four of them. So I'm able to taste this old juice without having to open the bottle yet. So Banff mothballed in 1983. Over the years when it was uh, first opened in 1824, they have had a good number of fires that have destroyed parts of this, the distillery through the years. Um, could have been the guy mixing the, uh, the whiskey. I don't know, but they've had a lot of fires. Most of it was demolished by the late 80s after it was mothballed in 83. However, there was a fire in 1991 that destroyed the last remaining warehouse and that distillery is, there's nothing there anymore of that distillery. So, um, Banff. Let's take a look at this. Of course, this has been sitting 30 minutes, 28 year old whiskey, about 30 minutes. The color is kind of a golden straw. I suspect this is, uh, well, I'm pretty sure this was done in oak barrels. The legs, you would think for a whiskey that old, would uh, 
be slow forming, but I think due to the low ABV, it's, you know, the legs are thin and they run very quickly under the nose. So there's almost no alcohol um, ethanol effect you're getting from nosing this whiskey. Of course, it's only 40% AV, but still it's 40%. It's very, very fruity. There's a uh, sweet, really sweet apples. There's a uh, sweet oak to it. like island fruit, pineapples, and mango, and a vanilla you typically, typically associate with a bourbon barreling, but I don't think there's a bourbon uh, cask used in this. But mostly it's fruity, it's not real complex, it's, it's, uh, there's a little bit of a malt but it's fruity, the palate. The fruit that's on the um, it's kind of thin, actually, of the mouthfeel, but it is fruity. I get caramelized fried bananas. Not like a hint of it, not a sweet, sweet flavor of, of caramelized bananas, but caramel and bananas. Let's have another sip. On the second taste, once your taste buds acclimate to it, I get melons, honeydew melon. That mango's there, the tropical fruits. There's a toffee taste to it and kind of butterscotch. Coconut, very, very tropical, a lot of tropical fruit. Let's uh, put a drop of water in. Normally I don't find you get much out of a whiskey that when it starts off with a low ABV, like uh, 40%, you're gonna get much, just a drop. I think it's taken away from the nose. It's diluted the um, fruitiness. It's very subdued down. Yeah, it, it, uh, n there's no help with water on the nose. Excuse me. I think it gives it a little more of a, even though I'm lowering the ABV, I think it makes the alcohol more to the forefront, overriding kind of the fruit because it's subdued it so much. You can now kind of feel the alcohol that's coming through and penetrating through the fruit. It's losing uh, what balance it had. And uh, I prefer it without the water. On the finish, it's drying. It leaves a hint of uh, melons. It's not very long at all. I think for sure this whiskey would benefit from a higher ABV at 40%. I think it loses a lot of power of its flavor at 
46 or 47, it would make a big difference. But it's Banff. And um, if you haven't heard of that distiller, look them up. Uh, they're, it's, it's, it's tough to find any Banff up bottles. It's not in the league of Brora or Port Ellen, but it is, uh, it is one of the lost distilleries. Well, thanks for joining me. By the way, I'd rate this about an 83 out of 100. Um, I expected a lot more from this bottle. I really did. I was really excited to get it and thought it would be something just incredible, but it's, it's, um, it's a little below average. Thanks again. As I asked you to, please share, subscribe, and like. Um, there's a blog that I have that you can see uh, below as well as an Instagram. You can check out a lot of pictures and different bottles I have. I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you on the next review. Take care.